thank you very much sir for uh, uh, for uh, welcome and uh, introduction i present myself before the august gathering to have some uh, insights over the updates on monogenic diabetes and neonatal diabetes mellitus although i am not a pediatric endocrinologist i am a diabetologist and endocrinologist principally focusing on adult diabetes but yes we do come across uh, young onset diabetes these days and the percentage is increasing over the last few years that we have experienced in our clinical practice so for next 20 minutes i shall be going you i shall be taking you through the young onset uh, diabetes principally monogenic diabetes and neonatal diabetes mellitus so greetings from rishikesh and from uttarakhand to this holy place so how to approach a patient with diabetes this is a big question how to approach a patient who has come to you for the first time as a diabetic patient now the work has already been simplified more for me by my earlier speaker when i come across a patient with diabetes mellitus you can have two type maybe monogenic or maybe polygenic we all know what is polygenic type 1 and type 2 so need not go into the details so what about this monogenic diabetes it could be maturity onset of diabetes in young that is taking place in adults principally whereas neonatal diabetes is principally taking place in the children or neonates or newborns so what about this maturity onset of diabetes in young how to address this issue the moment you have a suspicion of this kind of uh, you know diabetes which is monogenic in nature 20% is accounted by glucokinase abnormalities and rest 68% by the transcription factor abnormalities and i mean there are many many more modes which we are discovering for last approximately 15 years we have moved from mode 6 to mode 13 and many more have been added that is why this is called mode x we don't know what this is exactly is we are exploring more and more genetic and transcription defects so i shall be focusing on this uh, glucokinase abnormality as well as the transcription factors so principally we have four transcription or five transcription factors which are responsible for majority of the uh, transcription factor uh, abnormalities and most important of them is hnf1 alpha that is typical of modi 3 so other uh, than hnf1 alpha we have many more but i am not going to the much uh, biochemistry part i am basically a clinician and all we are clinicians so we need to go how the approach should be to a patient who is having a young onset diabetes so principally i shall be focusing on maturity onset diabetes in young along with neonatal diabetes mellitus so this accounts for approximately 3% of the people living with diabetes the unique features are this is a monogenic that is single genetic defect is there you can pinpoint this gene this is a autosomal dominant in nature and you have to have at least three generations in your history while you suspect a patient to have maturity onset of diabetes in young and one of the parents is affected in these three generations that is the catch for the uh, presumptive or prospective diagnosis of uh, maturity onset of diabetes in young how to say that this is young onset diabetes the patient should be typically less than 25 years of age or in the third decade they present as early onset of diabetes maybe in third decade if when compared to type type 2 diabetic patient my early speaker has already elaborated that they do have less insulin resistance or no insulin resistance features they are also negative for auto antibodies so principally we have two types of uh, modi one is glucokinase gene defect why i say this is a separate entity because this kind of modi is basically managed by diet and lifestyle modification they do require sulfonylureas but lesser dose and later in the course of this disease they have early onset of disease since childhood or since birth whereas transcription factor defect they ensue late in the course of development of diabetes of maturity onset diabetes in young and they present later in the uh, you know uh, adolescent or maybe early adulthood so how to characterize these type 1 type 2 and maturity onset of diabetes of young so you have clinical parameters you have biochemical parameters you have genetic parameters so let us talk about the clinical parameters age of onset of course the type 1 is uh, presenting early the ethnicity we have already discussed we are you know one decade earlier than other diabetics acute onset dk type 1 gradual onset modi no dk this is a typical feature of maturity onset of diabetes young so obesity is almost uh, not existent in the modi 
whereas type 1 are lean and thin type 2 basically they are either normal weight or overweight or frankly obese but at this point of time i must admit that please use the asian criteria to define obesity not otherwise when a bmi is more than 23 we as indians we are obese so that has to be kept in mind so do not wrongly classify your patient as normal weight by other parameters where bmi more than 25 is taken as overweight please don't do that so the moment we are we are approximately the the uh, criteria for obesity uh, for indians is almost overweight for our counterparts of the developed nations so insulin resistance features are of course not there in modi acanthosis nigricans insulin secretion is variably decreased insulin sensitivity is normal in these patients insulin dependence is infrequently required they are basically responding to sulfonylureas whereas type 1 they have permanent dependency of insulin so far as the antibodies are concerned there are large number of people are either ic antibodies or gat 65 positive and family history which is 100% in modi as opposed to type 1 diabetic or type 2 diabetic so we start with the clinical picture of having a family history of three generation diabetes in young onset diabetes kindly consider modi and the history if it is present you are 100% sure probably that you are coming across a patient with modi only thing that you need to prove which type of modi you have in your hand and to label it which you know uh, genetic defect it is so it is simplified cartoon of how the beta cells they do function and uh, yes so the moment the glucose is basically sensed by glut two receptors in the pancreatic beta cell this goes inside the cell and glucokinase is the first enzyme that converts glucose to glucose 6 phosphate at this point of time the glucose cannot go back in the interstitium it is trapped now and then further down the stream the glycolysis takes place it generates the atp and this atp leads to opening of the potassium sensitive uh, atp sensitive potassium channel once this channel is opened there is a wave of depolarization that leads to internalization of calcium and efflux of calcium from the uh, endoplasmic reticulum that leads to exocytosis of insulin so anywhere in this pathway if there is a abnormality the insulin is not going to be secreted either by the prolonged opening of the atp sensitive potassium channel or maybe by the uh, you know transcription factors so any of these can be at fault so any uh, uh, of these can be picked up by genetic testing so the clinical characteristics of the patients with the uh, uh, modi is the patients who are having glucokinase uh, defect the onset is at the time of birth even they manage they maintain a low level hyperglycemia low level hyperglycemia and fasting hyperglycemia is usually high they can be managed very well with diet and exercise and later on they can require anti diabetic drugs so transcription factor deficiency or defects they usually present later in the course of adolescent or early adulthood the onset is at Uh, you know uh, adolescent or uh, may be progressively requiring oral anti diabetic drugs and later may be required insulin even so we have already discussed so 6 months down the line sulfonylureas is useful but why we use sulfonylureas responsiveness because the time when modi was described we had handful of drugs only sulfonylureas was available glibenclamide as a powerful you know sulfonylureas but we have proven in our own studies that those patient who are adult onset gat positive low c peptide they do respond very well to gliptins and the hb1c reduction is much much better with the gliptins as compared to sulfonylureas so now the era is changing we are trying to redefine modi in the clinical context so not only we are concerned about sulfonylureas nowadays we are also concerned about dp4 inhibitors we are also in concerned about the agil2 inhibitor but the thing is the dp4 inhibitor is working better than agil2 inhibitor and sulfonylurea this is the subset of patients who are gat positive normal bmi and low c peptide in our you know subset of uh, you know patients whom we studied and published the literature modi 3 is the most common in adults and the glucokinase 2 defect is the most common variety among asymptomatic fasting hyperglycemia in children so the moment you have relatively adult consider modi 3 in child early onset consider glucokinase deficiency that is modi 
this is the most common type of modi uh, you know uh, available with us it is typically misdiagnosed with type 1 diabetes this presents before 25 years these patients are usually not obese parents and grandparents are usually diabetic as the defining criteria for modi is they should have three generation of diabetic parents now the question arises when a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes in children may not be correct when the family history of diabetes of parents you do not get a you know family history kindly consider modi you get a family history kindly consider modi if you don't then consider the type 1 yes evidence of endogenous insulin production even after honeymoon period so once the patient has gone through the or passed through the acute crisis then look for the c peptide level if it is detected more than 200 nanomoles per liter then you are probably coming across a patient the modi not type 1 when pancreatic islet auto antibodies are absent that is gat 65 or ica they are absent the chances of modi being very high now this is the scenario with type 1 what is the scenario with type 2 when your diagnosis of type 2 in a young adult can be wrong they are not obese when you are coming a patient who is having normal bmi or diabetic family members who are normal weight not the adult itself or the adolescent itself if the parents who are diabetic they maintain a normal bmi then this is also a indicator that probably you are dealing with a case of modi ketosis are not detected no evidence of insulin resistance with fasting c peptide within the normal range so here you can pick up a patient with modi now the recent work done by tim j and others colleagues they have seen that c reactive c crp is markedly low in patients with hnf1 alpha then type 1 and type 2 diabetes or glucokinase so they have incorporated it in the algorithm for the management and sub classification of the diabetes in young now the algorithm says if the patient is less than 30 years go for clinical assessment hba1c c peptide ketones as my earlier speaker has said if the presentation is acute this is type 1 if the patient is having keto negative beta cell antibodies are negative then you have two types of patients phenotypically one is obese and insulin resistance this is type 2 second is normal bmi no insulin resistance strong family history you have modi so you have to sub classify this modi and this sub classification can be done by genetic testing only how to manage keep the blood sugar as normal as possible that's good glycemic control because these patients are also having a propensity of hypoglycemias so do not over treat them patient with hnf1 alpha gene mutation can initially be treated with diet and exercise that is glucokinase deficiency although they have marked postprandial hypoglycemia because there is no insulin secreted so you have to control this post postprandial hypoglycemic surge by using natiglinide so natiglinide can be used uh, basically uh, as a monotherapy or may be used with combination therapy so what is the current recommendations pediatric and adolescent diabetes international diabetes federation guidelines published in 2009 suggest switching patients with proven hnf1 mutation from insulin to sulfonylurea we all know that sulfonylurea is very well acting on these patients so the mandate is to shift these patients from insulin to sulfonylurea but even then 40% of these patients are still being managed on insulin only sulfonylurea remains the uh, first choice of drug in these patients the patients are extremely sensitive to sulfonylurea and as long as they do not have any problem with hypoglycemia they can very very manage with the sulfonylurea so maybe 6 months down the line after that you can you may require uh, or Uh, in case of lada when you have a confusion uh, that can be differentiated from modi by the persistent action of sulfonylurea in maturity onset diabetes in young sulfonylurea control the blood sugar better than insulin the dose of sulfonylurea is one fourth of the adult dose so you have to you gradually increase the dose as per the response if there is hypoglycemia sulfonylurea preparation such as low uh, short acting like glycolazid or slow release preparation or meal time dosage with short acting agents like natiglinide may be considered so this is the clinical pearl so malignite analogs can be used alone or in combination now the studies have proven through case reports that this is equally effective as sulfonylurea is the hb resistance reduction is as robust as with uh, sulfonylurea so glucagon like peptide glp1 receptor agonist yes they have shown this 
the mode 3 is responding to glp1 analogs also and they have conclusively proven that yes they can be taken off insulin so it is not only the time when we consider sulfonyl ureas in context of modi we have to explore so many more drugs we have indian data we have data from abroad we can use these molecules but with a caution so now this uh, ends the story with the modi now i am coming to neural diabetes mellitus so we are going to have a discussion on classification uh, permanent or maybe transient what genetic studies do you require pathophysiology clinical presentation and diagnosis and of course management so up to 6 months of life after the birth if the diabetes is you know uh, there this is known as neurodegenerative diabetes mellitus after 6 months to 1 this is infantile basically the uh, types of classification is transient that persists for 12 weeks after that it is no more there or this may be permanent that persists throughout you know uh, early childhood maybe late adulthood the transient neurodegenerative diabetes mellitus is basically requiring insulin for 2 to 4 weeks after that 12 weeks down the line the 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 diabetes is no more there but it is not permanently cured please be uh, cautious about these patients and this uh, this may reappear in india we have very less percentage of transient only 5% majority of indian neonates they have permanent diabetes the mutations are basically in the sulfonyl ureas receptor or abcc8 uh, that is called atp binding cassis subfamily membrane which is outer subunit of the insulin uh, receptor basically and the uh, the kcnj11 which is the inner one kir that is potassium sensitive so they are responsible majority of neonatal diabetes so i am going to discuss this only i am not going to the details of more uh, lesser uh, frequently uh, genetic abnormality the cardinal feature is severe intrauterine growth retardation hypoglycemia dehydration absence of ketoacidosis in these patients though transient it requires annual you know follow up of these patients so that you do not miss when they are coming again as a relapse there is a considerable overlap between transient and permanent but transient diabetics require less amount of insulin as compared to permanent so they are the features of the i mean uh, transient neonatal diabetes severe growth retardation and low c peptide and level absent auto insulin uh, uh, antibodies so there may be you know uh, fetal malformations also in these patients now coming to permanent most of the indian neonates they have permanent diabetes uh, diabetes mellitus based on the genetic of neonatal diabetes they could be either syndromic or non syndromic so if you come across with the uh, abcc8 or uh, sulfonyl ureas receptor or inwardly rectifying potassium channel abnormality there could be a developmental delay and there may be associated so many other uh, malformations also which are very small in number i am not going to discuss all this so this is a cartoon that shows about the glucose uptake and the role of kc and potassium you know inwardly rectifying potassium channel and abcc8 so this is a defect in the neonatal diabetes this channel remains permanently open so there is no wave of depolarization and you know exocytosis of insulin that is why they have they might have severe hyperglycemia at times so this is uh, what the uh, you know cartoon says so G, G, uh, glucose 6 phosphate cannot be further metabolized because of the uh, you know uh, opening permanent opening of this uh, potassium channel so what uh, the sulfonyl ureas does it closes this channel the moment this ch channel is closed the wave of depolarization is there calcium influx is there then the exocytosis of insulin is possible so treatment modality for neonatal diabetes is not insulin this is sulfonyl urea and why sulfonyl urea because these sulfonyl receptors are also found in the brain if you treat with insulin you are going to have developmental delay in neonate with insulin rather than with sulfonyl sulfonyl is a better choice of drug it does it reduces the chances of developmental delay so i am yeah so how to switch over from insulin to uh, you know oha sulfonylurea so you have a slow outpatient switch uh, protocol and is rapid in rapid in 5 days we switch from insulin to oha in slow we increase the dose of oha on a weekly basis we take approximately 4 weeks to build up the maximum dose of sulfonylurea so this is the typical algorithm so non syndromic neurodegenerative diabetes diagnosed before 6 months of age test for 6q24 abnormality that is if it is positive this is transient neurodegenerative diabetes and continuous therapy until recovery and if it is negative test for kcn 
J11 and ABCC8 that is sulfonyl receptor and ABCC8 genetic mutation and if it is positive this is a permanent you can level the patient that this child is going to have a permanent diabetes please be careful about this shift the patient to oral sulfonylurea to further differentiate whether this is permanent or transient if the patient responds for 18 months and doesn't require further then you are having permanent diabetes and if patient responds this is transient so this is the end of my talk take home message the correct diagnosis of young onset diabetes is a key to optimal management if obese exercise should be prescribed to promote weight loss modi 134 respond very well to anti diabetic drugs insulin replacement therapy in late stages particularly modi 1 and 3 is required basically modi 2 is non progressive can be managed with exercise alone and the therapy for choice in neonatal diabetes mellitus is sulfonylurea and not insulin with this i thank you all very much for patience man